This is a series on C for embedded systems. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. And if you like this video, please like and share. In this video, we will see how C program is executed. So execution of a C program. So once you have successfully compiled the C program, it creates an executable file. So as you all know, it creates .exe file on Windows. You execute or run the program. The question arises is that how does this program get run on the target? It could be on your computer. So the target can be both microprocessor or microcontroller. So the moment you execute this .exe file or it could be on Linux or it could be even on a microcontroller so how does this program gets executed so that is the question that we're going to answer in this video so watch till the end so in order to understand this we need to first understand a little bit about central processing unit and its interaction with memory that's ram and storage it's a file system so storage here means could be your sd card or your uh, SSD or your disk. Okay, so central processing unit. A CPU or a central processing unit is the primary component of a computing system responsible for executing instructions of a program. So here, the instructions are nothing but machine code. So the C code that you write is actually gets converted to machine code so this is something which we need to keep in mind so everything that gets executed on the cpu is a machine code instructions a cpu understands a low level so that is machine code language also known as native code the language of the machine code is hardwired into the design of cpu hardware it is not something that can be changed at will each cpu architecture example it could be intel it could be arm or it could be ppc that means power pc architecture so has its own idiosyncr idiosyncratic machine code which is not compatible with the machine code of other cpu architectures so what this means is Let's say you develop a C code, and this C code, let's say if it is compiled for ARM, you cannot run directly on the Intel machine, Intel x86 machine, because both have different set of machine instructions, or they understand ARM instructions, here it understands the Intel instructions. So you cannot directly run it. Let's say if you generated the binary for ARM, you cannot directly run it on the x86. So you, you have to compile this code, dot C code, for the Intel architecture. Then only you can run, run it. So that's the intention. That that's what this paragraph conveys. The machine code instructions or opcodes are binary representations of the instructions that a computer or central processing unit can execute directly so the dot exe file okay it just contains the machine code and that code gets executed directly on the cpu machine code is lowest level programming language and is specific to the architecture as we said above each machine code instruction corresponds to a specific operation that the CPU can perform, such as arithmetic operation, data movement, control flow, and more. So it could be, uh, of course, I'll not get into the detail of this. So you will have, let's say, ADD, and you will have R1 and R2. This is one instruction, for example. So such like this, you have opcodes or the machine instructions, which gets executed in the CPU. So a C, as C is high level language, compu compiler takes care of converting C code into machine code. So your executable file just contains that. 
So as I said, the C code gets converted to executable code and this executable code actually contains just uh, the CPU instructions, instructions for the CPU, or the machine code. On a high level, here you can see that this is the central processing unit. The central processing unit consists of control unit and the arithmetic and logic unit. So basically what it does is the control unit passes uh, the address the or interacts basically with the memory unit. The basically CPU interacts with the memory unit where memory unit consists both data and code. Okay, so this code is actually the instructions to execute. Okay, so the code is something which gets executed. So this is the code that gets executed and the data gets data also needed for the execution of the instruction because let's say when you do add, right? Add R1, R2, R1 or R2 is registers and add is the command, that's the instruction. And the data part is what goes inside this R1 and R2. So for that, any code for that matter basically manipulation of the data okay so that's the understanding here cpu in, it has both control unit and the logic uh arithmetic and logic unit we also call alu and which executes the code and that code basically works on a certain data so those both data and code are present in the memory okay so let's move on so when we say memory so your program or code it it will have different layers or different blocks in a memory okay so how does uh, memory gets allocated so memory allocation in ram and memory layout of c program so when you run the program, operating system start a process. So the, the typically when you run an exe file, so this exe file is executed by your OS. The OS in turn allocates a process a thread. So ideally, it's a thread inside a process that executes your your code. Okay, and a process is an instance of a program running in a computer. So this process gets its own memory area allocated in RAM. That is what we call memory layout. So when a process is allocated, it basically allocates a chunk of memory in the RAM. In RAM, you get a memory allocated, but for your process, a memory gets allocated, which is done by the OS. But let's understand this in a bit more detail. So the first block is the text so that is the binary code so this is the the code that supposed to be executed so code that's supposed to be executed that means any code the the, the c code basically gets converted into machine code right that is what gets stored in the text segment okay this is what we call a different segments the ram inside ram the process gets allocated with certain block of memory and in that block of memory you'll have different segments so we'll we will even more uh, see this in future so we have a concept called uh, storage classes in c storage classes and in this uh, when we address this we will see detail of how each uh, segment gets the variable stored in into these segments our variable can be stored into different different segments that we'll understand in future but for now let's go go one by one what are these segments and then understand a little bit of how our memory gets allocated what is that memory that gets allocated by the OS to a process? Well, the first segment is the text or code. 
So when we compile a C program, a binary gets generated. Suppose we generate a.exe for a hello world program. So a.exe consists of instructions and these instructions are stored in a text segment. So that just, as I said, simply stores the code. The initialized data segment. The initialized data segment or simply data segment stores all global, static, const or external variables that are initialized beforehand. The data segment is not read-only since it can be changed during the runtime. Data segment can further be classified as read-only area, read -write area. The variable initialized as const will come under a read-only area and remaining all will be under read-write area. So here you can see this is the initialized data called the data or the data segment. Here you can have anything that gets initialized will come into this. So we'll see more about this later. Then uninitialized data segment. So uninitialized data segment is also known as BSS block started by symbol segment. It consists all uninitialized global and static variables. So all variables in the segment are initialized by the zero and pointer with a null pointer. So anything in the initialized one, everything gets initialized basically to zero and the pointers gets gets the null pointer value. We'll see about pointers later. Then you have an interesting block called heap or a segment called heap. The dynamic memory allocation takes place in heap. So the dynamic memory allocation is basically when the program is executing a programmer as, as, as you the programmer can allocate memory dynamically and this gets into heap space the stack stack segment mostly begins at the end of bss segment and grows upward to higher memory address using malloc calloc we can allocate memory in heap the heap area is shared by all shared libraries and dynamic loaded modules in the process Okay, this is not stack, I would say heap. Pardon for this. So heap segment mostly begins at the end of BSS. So heap, as you see, it begins here and grows upwards. This is lower address, and this is the higher addresses. So from lower to higher address, it gets uh, it grows like that. And during malloc and calloc, these are uh, methods that are used to allocate memory. We will see this later. Then you have stack. Stack is located at a higher address and grows and shrinks opposite to the heap segment. All local variables are stored in stack segment. Also, stack segment is used for passing arguments to the functions along with return address of the instruction, which is used to be executed after function call is over. So local variables have a scope to the block, which is why they are defined in they are created when control enters into the block. So we will see this in later, but uh, you have, you'll have a function, for example, and it takes different arguments. We will see all of this. All the local variables actually go into the stack and anything that you pass and anything that this function returns will be present, will be present in stack. That's the understanding. So anything that is temporary will be in stack. Well, the, at last we have command line arguments. Okay, so one, one point is that stack grows from top to bottom, from higher address to lower address. Well, anyways, so both stack as well as heap, the way it grows is actually uh, part of the implementation. So compiler implementation, so most of the cases, uh, it grows, the stack grows from higher to lower address, and the heap grows from lower to higher address. The last thing is the command line arguments. The command line argument is like argc and argui, and our environment variables are stored in this memory. So at last you have this the top of the address, the higher address, this block, we will store the environment variables and command line arguments. Command line argument is basically as a what are the arguments, some inputs that you want to pass to your program itself. That is the via command line, that is the command line arguments. 
we'll, we will see all this in later yeah as i said we will see memory allocation in greater detail when we address or touch upon uh, the storage classes and see okay so let's come to the uh, program execution so how does a program gets executed execution of code in a cpu involves a series of steps and it's helpful to understand the basic concept of instruction cycle instruction cycle the fetch decode execute cycle okay so, so what happens is the first thing that the cpu does is fetch the fetch is the first step in the fetch process the cpu fetches the next instruction from memory so as i said you have your cpu and you will have memory okay so memory has both data as well as uh memory has both data as well as code that means instructions are part of this memory okay so the instruction pointer and the or the program counter keeps track of the memory address for the next instruction to be executed so basically you will have a cpu will have registers this one is called I'll, i'll call program counter this basically keeps track of which address i am executing the code so that is being tracked that is a fetch so your program counter fetches the address of the next code to be executed the decode in the decode phase the fetched instruction is decoded to determine the operation of operation to be performed so for example if it is addition or mul multiplication or there are different uh, things like move comma move so these are all different uh, instructions so in the decode phase the cpu decodes what is this instruction and it acts upon it uh, in the decode phase it just decodes it the control unit of cpu interrupts the opcode operation code it, it interpret interprets the opcode for the instruction and prepares the necessary internal signals to execute the operation so in the decode basically decodes what is the instruction is about and then it prepares the necessary signals and execute the execute phase is where the actual operation specified with instruction is carried out this might involve arithmetic or logic operations data movement or control flow changes the execution modifies the status of the cpu such as adapting registers and flags sorry updating registers and flags so all of this is part of the execution so execution is where the actual program gets executed your instruction gets executed the the fetch decode execute cycle repeats for each instruction in the program the instruction pointer is updated to the point to the next instruction and the process continues until the program completes or encounters a branch instruction so this is the this is how it works you have your cpu and you have a ram in that ram you have let's say a code segment right as as i said it's a text and it'll have different instructions when when your uh, code is running means the cpu fetches and decodes and executes so you have fetch decode and execute cycle runs throughout uh, and then your program is a series of cpu instructions so these instructions get executed as i said when you double click the program the operating system launches the program doing the housekeeping steps of allocating an area of memory within ram or a program loading the first section of the program's machine code into memory and finally directing the cpu to start running the code so here is the old picture so you have your cpu and you have a ram and you have your storage the storage is where you store the exe and we double click this basically gets allocated in ram 
it's basically gets into the ram as a text and of course if there is associated data also will be part of ram so running the program gets its own area in ram to hold code and data and copy instructions there so these instructions are copied here then the cpu starts running these instructions and you see the output or i would say output or it could be io operations or anything that is a program does well i hope you understood how a program or a c program gets executed So this is basically not just C program. Any code is executed in this way. You, you can take C++ or Python or Java or any anything for that matter. So that's how these uh, instructions are executed. The code gets executed. Well, I hope you like the video. If you like it, please share. And subscribe to the channel if you're not done it yet. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more projects, courses, tutorials, and tools.